In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a very simple custom effect entity. I'll be making videos specifically over enemies and familiars later on, but this video will basically lay the groundwork over how to make an entity and how to use it. Okay, before getting started, let's first establish the different types of entities that are exposed to you in the modding API. This video won't include Repentagon entities, but what you're about to learn will apply to those too. First, we have the base entity class, which all other entity types inherit from. This means that any property or functions that the entity class has are also present on any other type of entity. There are 10 different types of entities, excluding the script extender Repentagon's additions. Entity bomb, effect, familiar, knife, laser, NPC, pickup, player, projectile, and tier. We're going to be focusing on an effect today, but the way you create an effect and the way you reference it in code is universal across all entity types. We're starting with an effect because they are generally really simple to code and don't follow many rules. Like most things in this game, we first must start by defining an entity using XML. Today I'll be using this fresh mod here with only an empty content and resources folder, as well as an empty main.lua file that we'll edit later. Open up the content folder of your mod and then create a new file called entities2.xml. All right, I've opened up Visual Studio Code now. Like other XML files, we first have to define a root tag. This tag is named entities. I'm going to give it an attribute named anim2root which will be set to gfx slash. The anim2 root attribute tells the game where to look when looking for any anim2 files that we assign to entities. Then I'm gonna add a version attribute. Just set this to five as the vanilla game's entities2 to xml does that too. All right, close the tag. Now let's define our first entity. An entity is complex, so it has a lot of attributes to go over. Most are optional, so I'll only be going over the required or very common tags in this video. Start by opening a tag named entity. The first attribute in this tag is anim2 path. All entities are given an anim2, which you can access and play animations from. I already have a sprite and animation file prepared, so I'm just gonna drag them into the resources folder. Here's the anim2 for the entity. Note that the cloud is offset a little bit from the center, which helps it look like it's raining over whatever it is following. The ID of the entity is that first number when spawning it in via the console. We can either put in a brand new ID, or we can put in an existing ID and specify a variant. Do note that if you're setting a brand new ID, any ID above 1000 will make the entity have no collision no matter what. I'm making an entity effect. These are made for the visual effects you see in game, like the beams from Crack the Sky and Rain and Downpour. All effects have an ID of 1000, so I'm gonna set the ID to that. Now that I've specified an ID, I'm gonna give a variant as well. Variants let us create entities that inherit properties from other entities. I want to make a brand new effect, so I'm gonna create a variant of the ID 1000. Massive warning here though, you can actually omit the variant attribute and the game will automatically assign one for you. The problem with doing this with effects though, is that the game can automatically assign it to the already existing effect at ID 40, Star Flash, which automatically disappears when its animation is finished. To avoid this, just set your variant to a random unique value that's under 4095, which is the upper limit. I'm gonna set it to 2096. After that, set a name for your effect. This name will be used when grabbing the variant in code. For effects, that's actually all you need to do. And you could just close the tag there and be done. This tutorial is more for general entities though. So I'm going to go over all of the common attributes that you assign for enemies and most entities in general. I'm gonna go a bit quickly so that I can cover them all as there are a lot. Subtype is like another layer under variant and lets you create alternate forms of variants of entities. The maximum number this can be is 255. Base HP is for enemies and determines the HP it has and starts with. Boss determines if the enemy is to be considered a boss. 
It should be zero for not a boss and one for is a boss. Defaults to zero. Champion determines if the enemy can be a champion or not. It should be zero for disallowed and one for allowed. It defaults to zero. Collision damage is how much damage and hit points the enemy deals. It's zero by default. Collision radius is the size of the enemy's collision circle. This is one by default. Collision interval is how often in game ticks until the next collision should be evaluated. So for example, having this at three and having the enemy deal collision damage would cause it to deal collision damage once every three ticks. Default is one. Num grid collision points is the number of points that make up the collision circle. Higher numbers should be used for bigger entities that need more precision. Friction is basically the slipperiness of the entity. Lower values will make the enemy slide more, as if they are on ice, while higher values make them slide less. A value of zero will make them unable to move completely. Default is one. Shadow size is the size of the shadow, as you might expect. Tags alter the behavior of an enemy. For example, the tag no delirium on bosses makes it so the boss cannot be transformed into by delirium. If you've made a custom item before, tags are assigned in the same way. All right, that's most of the important attributes. You can also control what gibs, which are things like bones, guts, and blood particles, the enemy explodes into on death, along with how they appear in the bestiary and what enemy it devolves into when using the D10. This tutorial won't cover that as I'll be making a dedicated enemy tutorial in the future. So I recommend looking at the games entities 2.xml in the meantime to learn how to do that. If we go into the game and spawn the effect, we can see it spawns incorrectly and plays the default animation, but it doesn't do what I want, which is to follow the player. At this point, it's time to start coding. I'm in my main.lua file now. As always, start by registering your mods so that we can connect callbacks. Next, let's get the variant of the effect we just made. We're going to be using isaac.getEntityVariant by name. We do this instead of just using the variant we defined in the XML because the game has built-in protection for entity IDs and variants that overlap. So the variant we put in might not be the variant the entity has in game. So local rain cloud variant equals Isaac that get entity variant by name, sad rain cloud. This gives us the variant of our rain cloud, which we'll need to differentiate it from other effects later on. Now we're going to define a callback that will run when the rain cloud is spawned in. I'm going to call it on rain cloud in it. The event we're hooking into is MC post effect in it, which provides the effect that was spawned in as the first argument. So type cloud between these two parentheses. What we're going to do is very simple. Before anything though, we need to get the player that the cloud will follow. Since this effect isn't tied to any item or anything, and since it's just for this tutorial, I'm going to be getting the player in the first slot and follow them. This means that in multiplayer, it'll always follow the first player spawn, but that's okay for this tutorial. Grab the player by using isaac.getPlayer0. Note that we're putting a zero instead of a one. That is because most coding languages, including the language the game was written in, C++, usually count from zero when it comes to things like arrays. Lua is an exception here and usually counts starting from a one, but in this case, we must abide by the game's rules. Next, we will define an offset the cloud sprite will have from its position. This helps it look like it's raining over someone. We will be targeting the sprite offset of the cloud, which is a vector, meaning you can set an offset in the X and Y axis. I'm gonna make it vector zero negative 20 because negative 20 will be above Isaac in most circumstances. This isn't perfect and it doesn't account for Isaac growing or shrinking in size but it'll do for this tutorial's purposes. Remember, 20 is negative here because negative is up and positive is down. After that, we'll make it follow the player. This part's actually quite simple. First, just set the position of the effect to be that of the player. Next, we want it to actually follow the player. So call cloud, follow parent, then provide the player as the parent. 
The last thing we want to do is hook our callback so that it runs when the effect is initialized or spawned. So at the bottom here, do mod add callback, mod callbacks dot mc post effect in it. Then provide our function mod dot on rain cloud in it. We also need to tell the game to only run our callback when it's the rain cloud that is being spawned and nothing else. You can do this by providing rain cloud variant as the third argument, similar to what I did when I made the active item for the third video on this tutorial series. This lets the game know to only run our function when the effect spawned in has that as its variant. Make sure to hit save, then go back to the game and run Lua mod and the name of the mods folder to reload all of the code. I'm going to quickly set the stage to stage one again so that we have a fresh room to test in, then spawn the rain cloud. And yep, everything works. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can join my Discord server and ask in the modding help channel. Goodbye.